This is part three in a four-part series on the new services modeling tools in Rational Software Architect 754. In this segment, I will demonstrate using the new services modeling tools to define and specify service interfaces and service contracts based on the candidate services we derived in part two. Afterward, be sure to see part four for the rest of the demonstration. Next, we will create service interfaces in order to more precisely and formally define the services we intend to design and implement. We'll start by creating a package for them. We don't need its main diagram, so we'll delete it. To keep things straight, we'll create a package for each service interface and its related additional interfaces. First, we'll create one named Scheduling. To define a service interface to represent scheduling, we'll start by providing ourselves some context by dragging the relevant capability onto our diagram. In this simple example, we'll derive the scheduling service interface from the capability. In a real-world situation, this would only be a starting point. When a service interface is derived from a capability in this way, copies of the capability's operations are automatically added to it. Notice that an exposed relationship was automatically created here. This preserves traceability from the service interface back to the candidate service from which it was derived. That's all there is to this one for now. Next, we'll define one for invoicing. This one will be a bit more complicated because the consumer of this service will also have some responsibilities. We will define an interface to represent the operations a provider of the service must, must implement. The service interface will realize this interface. These operations really belong in the new interface, not the service interface itself, so we'll move them. A consumer of this service will be responsible for implementing an operation as well. To indicate this, we'll create a new interface to define this operation, and the service interface will have a usage relationship to it. We're finished with this one for now. Now imagine that we have also defined a service interface to represent shipping. It is similar instruction in structure to the previous one. We would also create one to represent the overall purchasing process service. We are now finished creating the non-behavioral aspects of our service interfaces. We want to specify more precisely the responsibilities of the consumers and providers of our services. To do that, we will create service contracts. The first one will be for the invoicing service.
We will add two parts to the contract, representing the consumer and provider. Each will be typed by the interface it is responsible for implementing. We will use an activity diagram to specify the order in which operations must be executed and by which part. We will add a partition to represent each part. The completed activity might look like this. Imagine that we created another service contract for the scheduling service. This service is simple enough that we decide that it does not need a behavior, but we define a service contract anyway in order to have the parts to create role bindings to later. The last service contract is for the shipping service. This time, we have chosen to create a sequence diagram as its behavior. We are finished creating service contracts. That's it for part 3. Thanks for watching. Watch part 4 for the rest of the demonstration, Service Participants, Services Architecture, and Service Properties.